you may remember this recently in art class. Some um, it's maybe been a while and some maybe not at all. Um, so I thought today we would review what symmetry is and how this can relate to art and our own art making. Almost any time you hear about symmetry, you see the example of a butterfly. This is because they are great examples of something that is symmetrical, meaning that it has two identical halves that act as a mirror image of each other. This is easy to see in a butterfly whose wings can open and close to show how they fit together perfectly in both shape and pattern. So we can draw a line down the middle of the butterfly and these two sides would be identical. We can do the same with this instrument. If we draw a line down the middle, we have two equal halves on either side. This imaginary line is known as the line of symmetry. Again, we can do this with the starfish, and you probably notice a pattern dividing these objects in half with a vertical line. But the starfish is a little different and a little special in that it, there is more than one way to draw a line of symmetry on the starfish so that it's divided into two equal halves. When we discuss this in art class, usually the first instinct is to now draw a horizontal line um, going across the starfish like this. But if we look at the points of the starfish, above the line we have one full point, and two half points of the starfish, where below the line we have two full points and two more half points. So this is not equal. If instead we look at how our vertical line goes from one of the points of the starfish to one of those indented um, corners of the other side, and we repeat this with the, other star with the starfish's other points, now we have found another imaginary line of symmetry on the starfish and have divided it into two equal halves. And you may have caught on that there's even more ways um, that we can go around the starfish and draw these imaginary lines. And ultimately, we find that the starfish has five lines of symmetry or five ways to divide it into two equal halves. So let's take a look at how artists might use this idea of symmetry in their artwork. If we start with this painting by Frida Kahlo, you might be thinking that it's not perfectly symmetrical, and you would be right. The two sides are not mere images of each other. Instead, we need to learn about the word balance. Now, this should be a familiar word as you think of balancing as you walk across the beam on the playground, or maybe you remember a math activity in school where you had to balance two sides of a scale. Either way, you were making sure that the weight of either you or on the balance beam or the ones on the scale were even and equal on either side. Leaning too far on one side and having too much weight on one side would make you fall off that balance beam, right? This idea of balance is something artists can use to help them create their artwork and decide where everything should go in their work. Now, when we talk about art, we don't mean that one part of the painting literally weighs more than the other part, but instead we mean visual weight or the space it takes up visually. For example, we can draw that imaginary line going down the middle of this painting. Again, we notice it's not perfectly symmetrical, but you also might start to notice that there are the same number of things on either side. For example, the monkey on one side versus the cat on the other, one butterfly on one side and one on the other, the dragonfly is the same way, the leaves in the background, and ultimately she's divided in half as well. So while the two sides are not mere images of one another, they are pretty equal and therefore they are balanced. If you can imagine all the different parts of this painting moving and going all over to one side, so the monkey joins the cat, the butterflies and dragons all fly over to that side, and even Frida scooches over a little bit, all of a sudden everything would seem really crowded on the one side and empty on the other, making the crowded side appear heavier. We can see this in some other examples too. This one almost has that imaginary um, line of symmetry created for us in the painting. Don't think that's an accident, right? This next one is by a contemporary artist, so she's still making art today and has an exciting way of making this symmetrical artwork. Um, so if you like it, definitely look her up. And just like the starfish, it has more than one line of symmetry. This one's a little different. It's not a painting, but a sculpture made out of sticks. And while it looks like a circular sculpture, it actually isn't. If you look closely, you'll see that the sculpture is only half a circle. 
and the other part of the artwork is made by the reflection of the water. It's a really neat illusion that this artist, who's one of my favorites, used to create this symmetrical and balanced, both literally and figuratively, um, artwork. This idea of a balanced symmetrical reflection can be seen in countless other artworks and paintings of reflections, where the line of symmetry is now a horizontal line, dividing the artwork into what is above the water and the reflection in the water. All right, so this week we are going to practice making drawings that are symmetrical. So I have a bunch of worksheets you can print off my website, um, like the ones here, and also a video of me demonstrating how to use them. All right, and if you can't print these off, I also demonstrate in that same video just how to go ahead and draw one on your own. And then finally, you can also go to toytheater.com and play some symmetry games and make some um, symmetrical artwork. I have a video on my website demonstrating this as well. and Or you can just go um, and check it out on your own and see what you can create. So have fun experimenting with symmetry this week. It's going to be a great practice um, for what we have coming up next. Have fun, guys.